Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration, the nation's first community development organization, goes back to 1967, a time when Americans were as deeply divided and even angrier with each other than they are today. And just like then, artists and cultural institutions took the temperature of the tumultuous times and tried to meet the public's need for political expression. Well, one of Restoration Arts' ongoing efforts is its yearly art series, Project Protest, and this year subtitled, Silence is Not an Option. Here to tell us what's on the schedule, from the music and theater to an exhibit of life-size quotes across the campus of Restoration Plaza, I can't wait to hear what that's about, are the project's curative director, Hollis King. Welcome to BK Live, sir. Thank you very much. And also the arts consultant, Barbara Ballard. Welcome. Hey, how are you guys doing? Great. We are fantastic. You know, Wonderful. one of the reasons I'm, I feel so good is because I live in Brooklyn. Yay. Yay. I live, I live in there Brooklyn. There are worse places. And there are definitely worse places. Um, I love Brooklyn very much. And the whole time that I've been here, um, you know, Restoration Plaza and the programming that comes out of uh, that institution has just been, you know, sort of second to none. I was really surprised to find out to hear that it was. Uh, as old as it was, and it was the first of its kind. So can you tell us a little bit, Hollis, about why there was a need for this institution? I th so restoration, as the word restoration suggests, restore, mm -hmm. restoring community, um, dealing with issues that face the community. Restoration was this oasis in the center of a community that was going through tremendous social upheaval. And so the idea that was then it's still now the people in the community need a place for support uh, economically, artistically, and restoration is that oasis in Brooklyn. Okay. So we're going to fast forward through some of the bad old days and know that we're facing some challenges externally and internally in Bed-Stuy, Central Brooklyn, and Brooklyn as a whole. So I wonder, Barbara, how this year's project is meeting the times that maybe you didn't even anticipate, but here we are. Well, my perspective is, is that restoration, Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration and the Center for Arts and Culture, their DNA holds justice and revolution. Like revolution and justice is all through the DNA throughout the campus, um, throughout the uh, productions that we're presenting. Um, so it's sort of, it's like a mirror image of our community and what's happening around the world, basically. Okay, so can you tell us about um, silence is not an option? Yeah, so first I want to say that to do good art or to do good work, you need good leadership. And so Dr. Inira Etwaru at Restoration has had a really forward-thinking kind of approach to social justice and democracy. And one of the things we were talking about was how do artists deal with this constant barrage of bad stuff? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we went through a spate of killings that affected everybody I know. And I know what my friends would talk about, feeling uneasy and uncomfortable. So silence is not an option came out of some of those conversations. And I thought to myself, well, I grew up in Brooklyn, and I remember chokeholds. I remember young boys losing their lives for jumping the turnstile. And then I thought, let's look back at some of the articulate voices in the community and what they had to say about things like this. So we went back and we looked at Marvin Gaye. Brother, 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 there are far too many of you dying. Mother, 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 there are far too many of you crying. 1971. And we say, silence is not an option this time, you know. We need to really constantly deal with this through the art, you know. So we went through tremendous amounts of writings, like, you know, Nikki Giovanni. She has this beautiful piece of poetry called Allowables, and it says something like, I once saw a spider, a brown papery spider. It wasn't a big spider. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but I killed it. You're not supposed to kill what you fear. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So there are other arts offerings that are part of this as well, including some performative things. What else is on the menu besides such thought-provoking quotes and things that we're gonna see? Well, we're working on the expansion and the construction of the Billie Holiday Theater, mm -hmm. soon to be open in 2017. Um, again, under Dr. Etuaro's leadership, um, a whole entire campus focused on justice and revolution through performing arts, through visual arts, through music, through theater, will be all across um, the Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration Campus. Um, we've expanded our performing arts center, our dance studio will be, yeah, this is amazing, you guys have to come. Uh, yeah, you know, so that will be ex in, in a part of the expansion as well. Um, so we're looking forward to really opening the doors for the community to, for it to be a collaborative effort, you know, there on that side. So there are groups protesting here in the city. Um, and a lot of times, you know, when we, we sort of speak to these organizations, you know, this is just me, but sometimes I feel like we're sort of preaching to the choir a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know. Um, how do you take what you're doing and engage new audiences because the face of Brooklyn, the streets of Brooklyn are changing. Well, I can say that, let's step back for a second because Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration will be 50 years old in 2017. So we're not only um, like building these, these productions, these concepts on the legacy, amazing legacy, uh, of Bedford-Stuyvesant restoration and social justice, but we're looking back, but we're also taking all the knowledge that we were able to obtain and also looking 50 years forward. And so that would mean to be able to focus on world-class performing arts. What does that mean? That means opening the door for collaborations and storytelling that reflects what, how you put it, the new, um, the new, new face, <laughs> the new face, word on the street. Yeah, the new face. Um, so that we're having this dialogue to also talk about the experiences of of black people from a global perspective, which that would be inclusive of. And I assume that's a historical perspective as well, looking at the continuum. So I wanted to ask you specifically about we've been here before. We've been here before. The line we've been here before is saying to you, all of what we're seeing now is part of a continuum. And we have to, cons one of the things we have to be doing all the time is constantly being vigilant and, and, and provocative and shaking it up to seek justice. So one of our presentations coming up in the spring is looking at the whole African diaspora. Looking at, through arts, we have two artists, one from France and one from West Africa, L looking at lyrics of African musicians, right? Like Fela and like Alpha Blondie, Salif Keita, and they address global issues, deforestation, skin bleaching, all types of issues. And these artists have taken these lyrics and interpreted it in these amazing tapestries and paintings that we are gonna display this spring. So that's how we tackle all of this and continue to agitate and continue to stir up the pot and have our voices at the table. You know, I have to ask, in this sort of current political climate, um, extended uh, campaign, you know, do you think that this will affect your your organization, how does your organization sort of weather the times as uh, the political landscape in America changes? Well, I think that given the fact that Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration uh, was created in 1967, and we know it was going under the Civil Rights Movement, yeah. you know, we're gonna be here today and we're gonna be here tomorrow. But given the fact that the first uh, organization of that kind in the United States of America. So uh, standing on, on that legacy and having a, an amazing team, team that we work with, an amazing board that sees vision, um, I don't see any issues with, with sustaining our voice and sustaining our presence in the community to allow other people, not even allow, to provide a safe space mm -hmm. for, for, 
folks to speak truth to power. That's how I feel. Okay. No matter who's sitting at that desk in that office. That's yes. right. So how do people find out what's going on at Restoration Plaza? I went to the website yesterday and looked through everything. I went to your website as well. It's awesome. But how, do you, how, how can you uh, direct people to the website Everyone so they can find out what's going on? Everyone should go to restorationart.org. We constantly update it every, every week. You see dance, drama, spoken word, music. You know, see all of the events we have see going elders, on. See elders, you see youth. Yeah. I, I love it. It's a little yeah, family programming. It's, it's really programming. a place that you can access from anywhere and get all of the up-to-date information. We keep it very timely. And it's all a holistic site, too, because you can get your money together. You can yeah. find out about right. engaging on every level and feeding your soul and your creative interest and all that jazz. They are restoring. There you go. To restore yeah. your home, restore your soul. You know, the interest we were talking earlier, you were saying that when the organization was created, it was so many sort of disparate people sort of coming together to make this work. You were talking about the motto, uh, you were talking Jacob about Javits. Jacob Javits. All of these people were part of the group that formulated restoration. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we want all of our politicians and fans and patrons to keep supporting. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We Thanks for having us. Years at least. Yes. yes. All right. We'll see you soon.